on this week's gadget show, Web TV. John's testing out the Packard Bell Easy Note Butterfly Touch. We bring you the latest news from the world of tech. And with Wimbledon approaching, it's game, set, a match on the iPhone. <laughs> Hi and welcome to this week's Web TV. I'm Pollyanna Woodward. Dion is on a well-deserved summer break, so I'm going to be your host for the next couple of months. So let's get straight down to business. Later in the show, I'll be revealing a great iPhone tennis game for all of you budding Andy Murrays out there. But first, with all the hype surrounding the Apple iPad fueling the tablet versus laptop debate, it's easy to overlook some of the computers that, well, are a little bit of both. One of those computers is the Packard Bell Easy Note Butterfly Touch. But is it really the best of both worlds? We asked John for his first impressions. With all the recent brouhaha about tablets and the iPad, it would be easy to overlook another form of personal computer, the convertible laptop. What it is is basically something that looks like a normal laptop. It opens up to reveal a keyboard, but it's also got a touch screen here, which you can twizzle around and use it in a tablet configuration as well if you want to. They've been around for quite a while now, but they haven't really taken off and made it into the mainstream. But maybe this new Packard Bell Easy Note Butterfly Touch is going to make that breakthrough. And it makes a pretty good first impression, mainly because of the screen. They've used a capacitive touchscreen, 1366 by 768 resolution, and it's responsive enough for you actually to be able to use Windows 7 with the icons at their normal size. You can switch between web pages quite easily with a swiping motion. If you want to enter text, you tap into a text box, on-screen keyboard appears, and again, that's quite usable. It's not quite as responsive as an iPad screen though. Um, you notice that particularly if you go into the supplied Adobe Photoshop application and start drawing, it's just not really that satisfying. In fact, I tended to be drawn back to using the laptop in a more conventional mode with the keyboard. Occasional tablet use was nice, but the most use I made of the convertible screen was actually to twizzle it round like that and prop it up as a handy stand when watching videos. And the positives continue. It's reasonably light for an 11.6-inch laptop at just over one and a half kilos, and it's got a reasonably powerful dual-core processor that's good enough for watching HD video. It's not that powerful a processor, though. It's one of those ultra-low voltage ones, which does have the positive, though, that the battery life is very good at eight hours easily. It's got four gigabytes of RAM, a 320 gigabyte hard drive, and all the connectivity you could reasonably expect. Several USB sockets, an HDMI socket, and a card reader. On the negative side, I don't think the keyboard's that great. The tiled keys are simply too close together for typing comfort. The screen's a bit too reflective, and there's a truly hideous customized interface called the Touch Portal, which is best avoided. Thankfully, you don't have to use it. Overall, though, I think the Butterfly Touch is a very likable small laptop. As for the convertible aspect, though, I don't actually think it's that useful. So, in spite of being likable in many ways, I think the Butterfly Touch is still destined to be a niche product rather than a mainstream one. <laughs> Right, time for the news, and first up is the upgrade to Apple's Mac Mini. Announced earlier this week, the smallest and cheapest Mac available has undergone a makeover inside and out. The chassis has been totally redesigned and now features a 1.4 inch thin aluminium unibody enclosure, which gives it the same look, feel and durability of a MacBook Pro. The insides haven't been overlooked either. From your 2.4 GHz Core 2 Duo processor, 320 GB hard drive, and your improved graphics card. Perhaps more interesting is the inclusion of the HDMI port, which is a first for the Mac range. It means you could even pop this underneath your telly. Prices start at £649, and it's available to purchase right now. Next up, the exciting world of online documents, spreadsheet and presentation editing steps up a gear as Microsoft finally released their much-anticipated rival to Google Docs. Office web apps allow you to quickly and freely edit Word, Excel and PowerPoint files directly in the browser, meaning that you don't need a copy of Microsoft Office on your computer. 
All you need is a Windows Live account to get going, and using Microsoft's SkyDrive storage system, you can upload up to 25 gigabytes of docs online, meaning you can edit them at a moment's notice. Obviously, the web versions aren't as feature-rich as what the desktop software is, but nevertheless, it's a great move and definitely worth checking out. Office web apps are free to use and available immediately. And finally, the biggest gaming event of the year, E3, has been taking place this week. Now, the Gadget Show isn't one to miss out on three days of the very latest video game announcements, first plays, and having the chance to mingle with Mario. So we sent a team halfway across the globe to get the lowdown on the latest gaming tech. Check out the website later in the week where we will bring you a special report from LA featuring all the latest news and announcements, including the Xbox Connect, Sony Move and the Nintendo 3DS, as well as all the games you will soon want to spend your hard-earned cash on. Now, armchair sports fans, Wimbledon is just around the corner, and just in time comes a cool app called Air Tennis. It attempts to bring the thrill of the centre court into your own living room. So, bearing that in mind, I decided to pop along to the Gadget Show office to practice my backhand. Right, tennis, like a lot of other sports, isn't really one you'd want to play indoors, unless, of course, you're playing air tennis. Air Tennis is an app developed by Unit 9 for the iPhone. It uses a handset built-in accelerometer to detect tennis-like forehands and backhands, meaning that you can whack an invisible ball forwards or backwards. So, you can have one player or two players. Um, seeing as I'm on my lonesome, ticket for one, please. That takes you then to the practice serve or training session. So, training session is where I'm headed now. Great thing is, it actually gives you instructions of what you're doing and how to actually throw. So, if you scroll through, there's your forehand swing, then, of course, your overhead swing, and there it's showing you how to hold on to the device. And I will add right now, hold on to it tight. There has been an occasion where mine's flown out of my hand. I'm going to do five balls. I don't want to embarrass myself too much. Overhead. Oh, I managed to hit it. It's always good. Missed one. Overhead. Got that one. Now, what it's doing is it's telling me what I'm playing, whether I need to go overhand, forehand, or backhand. So you have a little second before it actually kicks the ball out for you to be able to know what you're about to do. And that's really important because it is a matter of precision. You have to get this right. So I've done my five balls. I managed to get four of them in, which is not too bad for me, actually. And I missed one. So even though I'm managing to get a little bit of practice in, not really that much fun playing tennis on your own. You need someone else. And luckily enough, Dion's here, she's going to give me a hand. Dion, are you and ready and ready to go? Do you know what? I had a little sneaky practice earlier. And then <gasps> you might be wondering why I've got a little wrist strap on my iPhone case. It's because I threw my iPhone on the floor. Luckily, she's done it some serious practice. But yeah, I refuse to be defeated. <laughs> oh, we'll soon see. Come on then. Okay, so here we go. Instead of playing the one player, you just hit two player. What that does is it connects my Bluetooth to the other phone that you're going to be playing with. So it's found an iPhone. That's handy. That's I guess me. that's you. Yes, Fabulous. Between the two phones, it works out one of us is going to be serving and the other person is I'm just going, going to first. have to be playing the game of tennis for their life. <laughs> oh. Yay! Oh. <laughs> I'm currently winning. No! No! I lost. Miserably. It's all about the wrist strap. See, that's what you get for gloating. Well, that's all we've got time for, but remember to join us the same time next week when we'll bring you another roundup of what's hot in tech. In the meantime, remember to check out the website for the upcoming special video reports from this year's E3 Expo in LA. Bye for now.